Bob Dylan's basement tapes are a mysterious collection, but some of us look at his original lyrics from that era turned up again. Producer T-Bone Burnett was just the man to make those words sing. He handpicked a band of successful musicians to create a new Dylan sound. Jeff Glor sat down with them. When you start a band from scratch, you don't normally expect to have great songs immediately. It's just that we arrived and these songs were great, and so making them sound great was our challenge. The songs belong to Bob Dylan, and now the super band tasked with making them. The new basement tapes, Elvis Costello, Marcus Mumford of Mumford & Sons, Jim James of My Morning Jacket, Rhiannon Giddens of Carolina Chocolate Drops, Taylor Goldsmith of Dawes, and producer T-Bone Burnett. I got a call from Bob Dylan's publisher saying that he had found a box of lyrics from 1967 and uh, uh, would I be interested in doing something with them? And I said, yes, I would. Bob was playing with language in a particularly colorful way at that time. And it ain't no use in calling out my name. Would you say that the words were more important than the music? The words are just as important as the music. There'd be no music without the words. I can't hear you anymore. By the mid-1960s, Bob Dylan was the poet king of music. But after a motorcycle accident in 1966, he famously holed up in his house in upstate New York. It became the most prodigious writing year of his life. A small selection of what became known as the Basement Tapes was released in 1975, but the collection has never been complete. How could she reject me, send me on my way? With these new lyrics released, Burnett gathered six band leaders to collaborate and create music for Dylan's lost words. There were no conditions, so that took away a lot of the, uh, a lot of the trepidation because you could, you could clearly see, particularly once we got to Capitol and we were actually handed the original handwritten manuscripts to look at, then you could see the rhythm of the way any writer writes something down and you could see that you know, they were incomplete. That gave you the license to maybe make some editorial choices and knowing that we could do that without any prohibition meant that we could have fun with it. In the spirit of the original Basement Tapes, Burnett and his band spent two weeks in the basement of Capitol Records in Los Angeles, trying to replicate the artistic freedom that Dylan and the band first felt. You know, sort of go to the gym. Oh, that's great, yeah. You're making music in your own band or your own project or something. When you go in the studio, there's very much of a, well, we have to do this right now because we're going to be releasing this and then it's going to dictate the rest of our year, or the next six months, whatever. Whereas with this, everybody came into it with a, let's see what happens attitude. Going back to Kansas City. It got better as you guys went along. Oh, it was, it was great from the get-go. I mean, I, I went away the first weekend to do a gig with the Roots, and I came back and discovered Johnny Depp had been sitting in my chair. It was like, kind of like a fairy tale, like Goldilocks. <laughs> I got lost in the river. It was important. We all found. We didn't try to be every perspective. We brought our own perspective, and that, and that goes with the music that we were playing. Instead of everybody trying to play lead at once, it was everybody fit into the song that was happening, and that was the magic of really what happened, because we were doing that on several different levels. But even for today's brightest musical stars, taking on Dylan's lyrics in their own voice can be daunting. The pressure of wondering what Dylan's gonna think or care what he's gonna think, I think if you worried about that too much, that would turn it into a thing, like you're almost trying to please somebody or, you know, and, and I think that, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what we did, if we made a record that was 70 minutes of silence, somebody would say, it's brilliant. <laughs> and somebody else would say, these guys are hacks, they're horrible. You know, so no matter what we do. <laughs> we would have saved a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> That thing created, you know, there's, it's a beautiful thing. There, there are 40 some odd new Bob Dylan songs in the world now, you know. That's fantastic. How did that happen? It's just, it was wild. Wild and a wonder to hear, 47 years after Bob Dylan first put words to paper. For CBS This Morning, Jeff Glor, New York. Beautiful.
Yes. I oh love boy, watching. he Dylan was truly the poet of music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love watching musicians create. I would be curious about what he thinks about it. Yeah. It would be interesting if he mm -hmm. would ever say. T-Bone Burnett is fantastic. <laughs>